All right, what's up guys? Welcome to a uh, long-awaited Settle Corsa video. Today I'm going to be doing an instructional video on how to use Content Manager. A lot of people don't know how to use Content Manager. It'll make your life so much easier uh, rather than just launching the game through Steam. So uh, I'm going to walk you guys through a couple of things that'll that'll really uh, improve your Settle Corsa experience. But first, we got to grab Content Manager. So let's do that right now. Um, you're just going to want to go to Google and search Assetto Corsa Content Manager. Um, here I pulled up a link from AssettoCorsa.club. Um, it was the first thing that popped up. So we'll go ahead and click on that. And this is Content Manager. It's totally free. Um, and it's just an alternative launcher for launching the game through Steam. And it has a lot of features that the Steam launcher does not have. So if you click Content Manager here... Um, it's the same page. Okay, and then um, just basically we're going to find a download link here somewhere. Where is it? Download Content Manager. So you can download the light version or you can donate any amount that you like. It can be $0.25, cents, $1, $5, whatever, um, and then you get the full version. I recommend donating because these guys put in so much work into this thing and it really makes your life so much easier, especially... A set of course is a $30 game, so trying to optimize it and uh, in any way you can, I think is a great idea. So I donated, I think, five bucks, you know, d just whatever you feel is appropriate. Highly re recommend you just click the donate, go ahead and do that, um, and then download Content Manager. Okay, once you have download downloaded Content Manager, it's going to appear in an icon like this. I don't know if you can see this here, got a bunch of other crap going on. But basically, you double-click Content Manager, and it will launch a Seto Corsa for you, rather than going through Steam and then clicking Seto Corsa out of your Steam list of games, and then launch game, whatever. Um, you'll get Content Manager uh, launching it directly for you. So, um, to navigate Content Manager, it's a little bit overwhelming if you haven't been using it prior. Uh, along the top, you'll have your options of single-player mode, challenges... Uh, for various different races, live, I'm not even sure what live is, I've never used it, I think it's something to do with uh, streaming or something, um, and then online, online gets you to the server list and everything, so if you click online, you'll see it says Cuno's, that's just the regular Assetto Corsa server list, then LAN, local area network sessions, if you're hosting locally, uh, you'll find your own server on there, um, nothing here because I'm not hosting. You can favorite servers, so last time I was in these servers, I maybe clicked favorite, which you can favorite down here on the bottom right. Um, favorite or unfavorite, that way you can pull the servers up more quickly rather than looking through the, the uh, list every time. Or you can see your recent servers that you've been through. Um, and then you can also just search. So search, I have a Lone Star search to find the Lone Star Drift servers. And then a van search for, if I'm hosting, I want to search for my own server and make sure it's appearing, um, etc. So you can search for servers there. That's how you get to the online section um, if you're looking to play online with other people, which most of you guys who are grabbing a set of course of these days are looking to play online. I hope you are, because we want to tandem with you. Um, so that's that. That's how you find servers. If you... Do you not have the content for a specific server, for example? Let's go to the server list again. Cuños. Let's see, refresh. Nothing to display. That's not right. It's still thinking here. There we go. Okay. So here's the full server list. Now there's these um, buttons along the top here. Booking, empty, full, password, missing, and friends. All of those are filters for the server list. You need to make sure those are set properly because sometimes you won't be able to find your friend's server and you just have a filter set properly. So this is improperly rather. So this is show empty servers. I have it checked off. That means that every server here is going to be populated with at least one person. You turn that off, you can see empty servers as well. This is 0 out of 16, 0 out of 12. There's a bunch more hosted than there necessarily uh, have people in them. So. Just make sure, be aware of these filters when you're looking for your friend's server. Um, that may be part of why you can't find it. Uh, this one is for missing content. This is a big one. So servers with missing content, I have it checked off, which means I'm just not, not going to see any servers for which I don't have content. If I uncheck this, I'm going to get all these little error-looking things. Track is missing, Gunsai, Toge, 32 Battle Stage. 
Nico Circuit RL's track is missing. If I keep scrolling down here, I'll have this little caution emblem or whatever you want to call this. Track is missing, Driftland Aussie. It'll basically tell you you're missing content, you can't join this. So if I click here, it's telling me track is missing here, car is also missing, and then if I go over here, obviously it says track is missing, car is missing. So sometimes uh, a neat feature of Content Manager is you can actually just click this search and it will try to find that for you online. It will do a basic search of the, the file name and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Um, I don't really use that too often, but that is kind of a cool little feature that Assetto, our Content Manager rather lets you do. So um, that's basically that if you have missing content you'll see here that you can't join the server that's just an asset of course a thing in general uh, not specific to content manager so be aware you can only join servers for which you have the exact same content you have to have the same track file name like the exact same file and the same car files so if you try to join with a, the, an older version or the wrong version or something it's not going to work okay one of my favorite features about content manager is adding mods because we all know mods are the best thing for a set of Corsa. Like the base game is meh, it's whatever. But adding all these drift mods is what makes it what it is. So when you add mods, if you've modded before and you haven't used Content Manager, you know that you have to go through this very, very convoluted file path of through Steam and Assetto and Content and just it's like 20 folders deep to get to the card area or the track area to where you need to copy in those folders that you downloaded. So Typically, you'll download a uh, car file, a zip file, or whatever, a track zip file, and then you have to unzip it with WinZip or some program, and then take that file, the end result, and copy it into the correct folder in Seto Corsa. Well, now, uh, with Content Manager, you don't have to do that at all. So all you do is download the file, zip file, .7z, whatever it may be, and then drag it right out of your downloads folder up to this little hamburger menu right here at the top right of the screen. See it says drop a car or something else here to open it in the content management section. So this, as soon as you drag any downloaded file here, it will turn green and have this arrow like it's downloading or doing something. You just click that and then you'll see a list right here under downloads. This is no active downloads. It'll start downloading it for you immediately. You just click install. It'll unzip it, it'll put it in the correct folder, it'll do everything for you. You don't even have to exit and relaunch the game. Um, so, you know, if I'm missing uh, any, I have most of the stuff I need, but if I were missing one of these tracks, for example, here, I'll just go to an example here. Lone Star Assetto is a great resource for cars and tracks. Uh, so we're going to go to Content Downloads and Tracks. See if I can find something I don't have. I probably have everything here, but uh, we'll just look for anything. Uh, I don't know what this is. Comp.zip. It's a track, so we'll, we'll get it. Okay, so download. Download anyway, because it's doing the virus check, and it's a little bit larger file. So now, it's already finished, and it's right here, okay? So I'm going to minimize this window, leaving whoops, leaving Content Manager up, and then I'm just going to grab this comp.zip and put it right here on this hamburger menu. And boom, one installing. So now I just click that, and then click install right here. Boom. So that track is now added to the game completely in the proper folder. Everything's already done. You're ready to play. You don't have to relaunch the launcher or anything. You can just refresh. Like if, for example, I was on a server that required that track and it said the track was missing right here, I would have been able to drag that over, do that exact process, click refresh, and then it would no longer be missing. That was just an example because this is I'm not downloading this exact track. But that's, uh, that's how you do that, and that's how you can install mods really quickly and efficiently, and you don't get frustrated by, um, you know, going into all those endless folders. Okay, so that's how you navigate server list. That's how you navigate adding mods. Uh, let's go into settings for hotkeys um, for all your buttons on the wheel. So go into settings at the top here, top right. 
And then you're going to go to controls over on the left. And then here you have your options for what kind of controls, wheel, gamepad, whatever. You know, hopefully you're using a wheel. Um, and then they have some presets as well. So I have my preset saved, says Mike Fanatic down here. But they have some presets, uh, so built-in presets. You can go click the wheel you have, um, and usually those are pretty good. So I would start with a preset, like if you have a, a Logitech G920 with a shifter, click this one, and most likely you're going to get some reasonable settings. Um, and then you're going to have to play with it beyond there. So like to test your pedals and stuff, you can see right here when I push the pedal all the way down, I get a linear rise here um, if your pedal is messed up for example or you want it to go 100 percent throttle with only 70 percent of the throttle pushed down you can change this slider to where oh well now 70 percent is the max so all i have to do is push it 70 percent of the way and that's going to be 100 percent throttle in game um, things like that you can also do that with the clutch like you notice here this only goes from zero to 19 percent on the clutch so i barely have to push the clutch down um, only 19% of the way, just barely, to get a full disengagement, which, you know, is not necessarily 100% realistic, but you can, you can basically play with that to essentially adjust your engagement point if you want it to feel like your real car. If it's right on the floor, put it all the way to 100 or 90%. If it's right at the top, put it lower. Um, and then same thing with the handbrake. You can, you can set your range of how far you really want to pull it. Um, so those are your main driving inputs. To go to hotkeys and stuff, you go up here to buttons, and then you're going to basically be able to scroll through a whole bunch of stuff here. And you're going to want to get to all the ones you think are important. Like some cars have adjustable boosts, so you could program hotkeys to increase or decrease your boost on the fly if you want to. You know, I don't think that's as important as some of these other ones, but um, setting your shifter right there, you can program that. So if you just click this and then you'll have to shift into first gear and it will recognize the button. Uh, I'm not going to do that because I don't want to mess up any of my configuration, but this is where you do everything. So let's see, what else do we have? Um, one thing that's really good that Content Manager can do that the regular Assetto Corsa launcher through Steam cannot do is a teleport to pits hotkey. So that basically, anywhere, if you make a mistake on track and you're about to completely ruin a 10-car tandem train somewhere and you're near the front and you just feel terrible, typically, if you're playing Subtle Corsa through Steam, you'd be screwed and you'd be shamed and you'll never be allowed back in that server and everyone will hate you and you'll have no friends. It'll be bad. But if you're using a content manager, you can just program a hotkey to jump back to pits really quickly so let's see where that is i think it's under let's see system teleport to pits there it is button two so on mine button two is the a button so right here uh, if i get jammed up or like somebody makes a mistake in front of me and then that causes me to make a mistake or i make a mistake whatever you know it happens um and there's an entire train that you don't want to screw up you just hit that button real quick and it'll jump you right back to pits versus you know when you're typically driving on a set of course you have to stop the vehicle you have to get it all the way to zero miles per hour before you can click the skate button to teleport to pits um, with this you can do it while you're moving so you can just kind of get out of there real quick so that's a very uh, useful one uh, in content manager and then all these other ones you know I, you can basically program what you want there's so many more than I even use um, but that's the main one is like the jump back to pits and then I think one of these is going to be like a, a change view uh, Something like that. Let's see Maybe it's probably under this one like Gaunt's turbo Somebody asked me about change view headlights uh, There you go Change camera. So yeah, it would be under the buttons tab of controls. So you change camera at the bottom there um, And then you can you know fine-tune even more stuff I wouldn't don't go into too much of it just just program the hotkeys you think you need um, mainly the te teleport to pits change view um, look left look right like if you're on track and you're about to pull out of the pits it's nice to be able to look have your guy look to the right um, so you can make sure you're clear and you're not just pulling out in front of someone that's pretty much it for controls that I showed you how to install mods on the hamburger menu um, and then also, 
once you have all your wheels settings and everything done, save your preset and name it something. Um, that way you can reload it next time. Because if you, for example, set all these settings, they'll be set. But if you launch the game in Steam again, it's going to revert to all of your Steam save settings. And they're not necessarily, they're, they're not connected to one another. So you need to make sure that your settings and content manager for your wheel and everything are how you want them. Save a preset. That way, if you accidentally launch with Steam once, you know, and then come back to content manager, you can just load your preset and you'll be fine. Um, that is kind of frustrating. I have noticed going back and forth that it can, you can lose your presets and stuff. So um, make sure to save your, save your setup. And now I think we're going to try to find some tandem here. That'll be in, a, in another video. But hopefully that helps you guys understand how to use Content Manager and navigate set of course a little bit more efficiently. Um, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And hope that helped you learn something. And see you online.